Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Check it out, baby. It's your boy DJ Vlad, the butcher. Yeah, that I mean. And you over here on Video City. We show for the streets. You heard? Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice. You're watching Choice TV. So today's video, I feel like it was appropriate for me to get on here and talk about the downfall of DJ Vlad. Now, as you guys know, DJ Vlad has been a very pivotal figure in pop culture because as we all know, DJ Vlad has been taking over the world ever since the early 2000s, since he's been doing his controversial interviews. As we all know, DJ Vlad is known for shaking up the internet, creating pop culture moments, viral moments, viral memes because of his controversial moments. But I will say that there's been a lot of backlash and a huge hate train involving DJ Vlad for the past three years. And let me tell you guys why. So if y'all didn't know, people can't fucking stand DJ Vlad because DJ Vlad is low-key a culture vulture. Because Vlad is a Jewish white man profiting off of hip-hop heads, hip-hop figures. I want to say something real quick. Because when I was researching uh, you, it brought me to Vlad TV, right? And on Vlad TV, Vlad TV, I feel like he disrespected hip-hop. I feel like he disrespected Louis Farrakhan. I feel like he, did, and he didn't say sorry. So Vlad TV or anybody's watching this, I would like you personally, Vlad, to take every video that Nori is on your site and take it off. Again, he does work in the field of media, entertainment, gossip, tea, news. So considering that, in my perspective, considering what I do, I would have to look at that and be like, okay, well, I can see why he has a place or why he does what he does because there's obviously a market for it. I wanted to get on here and break down all the problematic things DJ Vlad has done and why low-key he really is a culture vulture. Now, all in all, I will say that I enjoy watching Vlad TV because he has such fucking amazing guests. I can't really give up the platform. And considering Vlad's position, there is a constant habit of him trying to pander towards the community that mostly consumes his content. And I want to say that he recently did an interview with Andrew Schultz, the very successful, popular, and controversial comedian. And Andrew Schultz, respectfully so, called him out for trying to pander to the community that he caters to and also gets backlash from persistently. America is a little more racist than we give it credit for. You know? I think you're trying to step on his back to make yourself look like you're some like a progressive, open-minded, I love black people, I'll do everything for black. Because you could make an argument what you do uh, what you do is way more detrimental to black people than him saying that word. You can say that. Actually, I think it is. To be honest, if you're only showcasing like the worst stereotypes of black people. Which I don't, but Constantly, or like the majority of the stuff. But like, you could say no, but we know what time it is. You know what I mean? So that okay. being said, you could make the argument that what you're doing is way more detrimental than him saying that joke. If we want to talk about the negative influence of something like that and, and of, of raw negativity, your raw negativity impact is way higher than his. So I personally don't even think you're in the position to criticize him. There's a certain amount of kids who want to end up on Vlad TV and the only things they see on Vlad TV are the most popular ones. And yes. the most popular ones are talking about some hood shit. So they're yeah. like, yo, I'm going to do some hood shit. Yes. Just like there's a certain amount of kids that want to be rappers and they see the popular rappers got face tattoos. So they yeah. go, you know what, I'm going to get a face tattoo. And I'm very glad that Andrew Schultz called him out. For some reason, it's a very popular thing for... You you know, people who aren't black to, you know, put some putty in their hands or put some bird seed in their hand and expect black people to eat out of the palm of their hands. And in some cases it works. And the man is a journalist. It's very difficult to condemn him without condemning myself or other people who are in the field of commentary, journalism, news, commentary, and much more. But when you're DJ Vlad and you've done shit like this... Check it out, baby. It's your boy DJ Vlad, the butcher. Yeah, that I mean. And you over here on Video City. We show for the streets. You heard? <laughs> you know, and much more. So it's not anything new that a particular brand will cater to the black community because the black community tends to be very sensitive and it's easy to cater to them because they're very reactive over the littlest shit. There, I said it, because none of your faves will say it. Now, Vlad got his rise to popularity and stardom back in the early 2000s, but he really got his start in the hip-hop and the entertainment industry back in the late 90s. So, DJ Vlad basically grew up on NWA, and he cites NWA as one of his greatest inspirations for being so into rap, music, culture, and so much more. DJ Vlad fell in love with rap music because of the movement of NWA, gangster rappers like Suge Knight, Tupac Shakur, Apache, Busta Rhymes, Q-Tip, and Wu-Tang Clan. So he was a fanatic of that whole era to the point where he even started dressing like a lot of rappers. Now, DJ Vlad built his whole empire of YouTube around 2007 to 2008. So DJ Vlad got on the YouTube train fairly early, so he was able to perfect his craft and build a nice milestone and build a nice empire on YouTube. Because throughout the years, he was doing YouTube interviews 
back to back when no one was really doing it like that. Before we had the Breakfast Club, before we had the Joe Buttons, before we had all these major platforms, we had DJ Vlad. And DJ Vlad interviewed almost anybody that he saw potential in or had a story. He didn't just interview rappers and ball players and celebrities off the gate. He interviewed anybody that seemed interesting. But I will say, for the longest time, I didn't know DJ Vlad was white. Cause again, he has a deep ass voice and he sits behind a camera for most of his interviews. Most people didn't really know that DJ Vlad was white until honestly the past eight, seven years. You know, a lot of us didn't know DJ Vlad was a white man because again, he interviews hip hop figures, hip hop heads, rappers, gangster rappers. So a lot of us thought that the magic behind all this was a black man, but no, it's a Jewish white man who is 49 years old, who is from Ukraine. Because back in the day, the reason why I always thought DJ Vlad was black was because again, he never really showed himself on camera. He's really just now in the past seven, eight years showing himself. And DJ Vlad also used to sport a black sand. Check it out, baby. It's your boy DJ Vlad, the butcher. Yeah, that I mean, you over here on Video City. We show for the streets. You heard? Bitch, you're from Ukraine. Where the fuck did I actually even come from? Where in the Malibu's Most Wanted did I even come from? I'm just saying, you know, it's one thing to say that he can talk about whatever he wants because, again, when you're a journalist, you can be a journalist and report on whatever. Nothing's off limit. But damn, I mean, you know, when you see stuff like this, it really makes you side eye him. It makes you think. It was intentional to pander towards the black community, profit off of it, and then eventually maximize into different avenues. Around the whole world, it's international. What's good, man? Oh, man, everything good, man. You know, we got the plaque last year, you know, the Mixtape of the Year Award, you know, making my wall look real nice right now. You know, shout out to my man Justo. Yeah, this actually happened and a lot of people forgot that this was even a thing. Then on top of that, DJ Vlad oftentimes gets backlash from a lot of figures in the rap community because as we all know, the Jewish community has never had the best reputation with the black American community in America. Now for those of y'all who aren't American or don't have old school black American parents, let me explain why there's always been awkward animosity between the Jewish community and the black American community. Now throughout history and throughout time, a lot of times Jewish communities have been known to own most of the media in America. And it's like that to this day. Who owns the New York Times? A Jewish family. Who owns Viacom? Who owns CBS? Who owns Paramount Studios? Who owns all these major companies where we consume most of our sports, news, information, paid programming, and much more. Most of that is owned by the Jewish community. Why do y'all think when Nick Cannon had all problematic things to say, the Jewish community was quick to make an example out of him. Viacom CBS has severed ties with Nick Cannon. The media company made the decision after Cannon made anti-Semitic remarks on a recent episode of his YouTube series, Cannon's Class. Viacom CBS says it supports education and dialogue in the fight against bigotry, but says Cannon didn't acknowledge or apologize for promoting hateful speech and spreading anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Most of the media has been owned by the Jewish community. And considering YouTube has their dumbass censorship laws, I'm not going to go too deep into that because that's a video that the internet is not ready for. But Jews have been known to own most of the media since the beginning of televised broadcasting. And why is that problematic for a lot of people in the black American community? I'm not going to go too deep into detail because, again, that's another video. But isn't it interesting how some of the biggest networks in the world aired menstrual shows, which menstrual shows are basically blackface shows where a lot of people walked around perpetuating black stereotypes. And we all know Hollywood has their crazy past of, you know, uplifting people who for some reason you know did blackface like jimmy kimmel for example and a lot of these platforms that air these problematic things are owned by jews and then on top of that you know the black man dressing up in you know fat suits and you know putting on pounds of makeup and wig looking like a woman or the stereotype caricature of a mammy the caricature of what they think a black woman is you know a lot of these major corporations that allow this stuff and funded these projects were owned by these major companies that are owned by Jews. So that's a big reason why so many activists and a lot of rappers have always been vocal because when you climb up that ladder in the entertainment industry, you really realize almost everything is owned, funded, and controlled by the same corporations and the same people who just so, be, who just so happen to be Jews. But DJ Vlad kind of falls into why a lot of people kind of side-eye him because he's part of that niche, that media 
niche of people that profit off of blackness and the black aesthetic and yet owns a major media company and most of his viral content stems from embarrassing a lot of black people and profiting off of black culture. And again, the black scent, like, come on now. Like, this is a big reason why people aren't the biggest fan of him. A lot of times, black community, the black community is always looked at the Jewish community as people who just simply profit off of everything that they are, find some way to monetize it, and then toss them off to the side. Same thing for a lot of these major record labels. You know, Dame Dash is a great example. You know, Dame Dash said one of the most evil, most slimiest people that he knows in the industry was the dude he initially did the whole Rockefeller deal with. I shook that shit up, and I benched the people from the other culture that I didn't think were treating us fairly, like a Leo or Cohen. Now, notice how Dame Dash says the other culture. He's referring to the Jews community because he knows damn well he can't really call them out because that's the un that's that's the untouchable community. Now, Leah Coleman is one of the most powerful people in the music industry, more specifically in the rap sector. Now, Leah Cohen is responsible for acts like Dame Dash, Jay Z, Rihanna, The Migos, Redman, and much more. So, Lear Cohen has a huge footing in the rap industry. I don't want to go too much deep on this, but Kanye West had a lot to say about people like Lear Cohen and a lot of people like DJ Vlad. Bitch, I'ma kill this nigga. I'ma fuck your bitch. I'ma kill this nigga. That's the real anti-Semitic shit that the Jewish people get paid off of. Being a crackhead wasn't cool. Now it's it, they seem like they're they're making it cool to be drinking lean and syrup and it's the most dangerous it's the most dangerous thing and... that's facing our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? Um, b because I, I I already answered that question. You weren't paying attention. Um, she asked me talent or issues, and I said talent. But I I, I have to I I can't give up on people. But I'm saying that's hypocritical though. You're saying um, the it's opportunistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got I got people to feed. Oh, I got a Leo. I got a I got a business to run. <laughs> You're gonna make Dame Dash take this clip and call you a culture vulture. Who's Dame Dash? You brought him up. I don't even know him. I don't even know him. So you bring him his name up. I don't even know him. So mind you, this is a man who ran Def Jam. You know, this dude was head at Def Jam for the longest time, and he's a big reason why so many rappers rose in the early 2000s. You know, especially during the late 2010s. But back to DJ Vlad. And speaking of DJ Vlad, do any of y'all remember when Rick Ross and his team beat the fuck out of DJ Vlad and basically jumped his ass? Well, if y'all don't remember that, that was a situation that happened back in the early 2000s when Rick Ross was rising to famous stardom. When rumors came out of Rick Ross being a correctional officer, which is odd because he's made a lot of music about gang violence, drug culture, and much more. But he was a officer. DJ Vlad famously asked him at an award show back in 2008 about the correctional officer rumors. And of course, Rick Ross was upset and pissed because he was put on the spot and he asked DJ Vlad not to ask him. And after the interview, Rick Ross's team jumped DJ Vlad. Because Rick Ross, they called you in the room. There was a little scuffle. Well, basically, they kind of jumped you. And then the pictures online, you were very bruised up and... You got, like, your eye was real fucked up. You look fine now, though. Thank you. I have to say, must be the Brazilian sun. You know, but at the end of the day, we all human. You know what I mean? And uh, it could happen to anyone. Yeah, it could. Thank God it wasn't. I was like, thank God it wasn't me. Other people <laughs> were hitting me up, like, no. This is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, other people were hitting me up. <laughs> other people were hitting me up, like, yo, I was supposed to interview Rick Ross, too, man, and DJ Vlad went first. I was trying to hit the boy for four of them big ones. It ain't work though. That defense. I had to fight the power. Instead of $4 million like he wanted, DJ Vlad famously got a small settlement of $300,000, according to the judge ruling. If you guys didn't know, a lot of people throughout the past two recent two years accused DJ Vlad of being a federal informant, which means he's basically a snitch bitch, which means people think that he's a snitch bitch and a rat. And the reason why people think that DJ Vlad is a rat was because it recently made headlines two years ago that the famous rapper from Brooklyn, the Panamanian Jamaican descent rapper, Casanova Two Time, is now locked up and he's basically looking at life in prison. If anything, he'll get like 60 years, but he's more than likely gonna be doing most of his life in prison. 
Now, why is Casanova two-time going to jail? Casanova two-time is a very famous thug and criminal, and he was a huge rapper in the drill scene back in 2018. His music overall is the typical shit that you would see in New York drill music. It's violent, it's nasty, it's vile, it's evil, it's low energy, but it's catchy, and most people liked it. And he basically saw a lot of mainstream success with his song Trippin' that he released back in 2018. Now, Casanova is really a hood dude in real life. It's not just for the music. He's not Ja Rule, he's not Ice Cube, he's not Rick Ross, he's not putting on or pretending to be a persona that he isn't. He really is about that life. Before he blew up in music and saw any mainstream success, Casanova Two Time was out here beating the fuck out of witnesses who saw him do something. He was pulling guns on people to intimidate them. He was involved in drug trafficking. He was involved with cocaine possession, crack possession, having 100 kilos of marijuana and selling it all across New York City. Overall, he was one of the biggest thugs in New York City. And honestly, quite frankly, the dude is a terrible person. On top of that, he's been locked up constantly in jail since he was 17. He didn't stop going to jail until he was like 27, but he kept doing jail time from the age of 17 to 27. So from the age of 17 in the year 2003, because again, the dude is like fucking 35, 36 years old. He was in and out of jail making bad and poor decisions, fucking shit up. And when he was in jail, he was fucking shit up in jail. There was even instances where he was out here beating the fuck out of his inmates, beating the fuck out of his cellmates, like slicing people up. And the NYPD was doing everything they can to take this man down because he's associated with so many drug dealers, murderers, and killers all across the tri-state area. So due to that, the feds made sure they targeted him because he put a lot of the shit that he was doing in his music. And of course, most people can argue that a lot of it can be episodic wordplay and storytelling and much more. But the dude is a thug and a criminal and has a rap sheet longer than the fucking equator. Casanova also pled guilty recently for drug-related charges and racketeering-related charges as of recently. The U.S. Attorney's Office claims Casanova led the untouchable guerrilla Stone Nation Bloods Gang and directed a multi-state conspiracy in that role. Casanova copped to a shooting and a robbery and a trafficking more than 100 kilos of pot. He faces between 5 and 60 years in prison when he is sentenced in December. It's unfortunate because he was actually at the height of his career and he turned himself in during 2020, right before the pandemic. As you already know, I'm fighting serious charges right now. But um, I'm innocent, that's one. Two, I've been fighting my whole life, so I'll get through this. But just understand how they can get you jammed up. You don't know nobody, you ain't got nothing to do with nothing, and they still get you jammed up. So, of course, he could have been the biggest rapper, but things went downhill. Now, here's why a lot of things went downhill and why DJ Vlad has to be involved in this. DJ Vlad got a lot of backlash because he interviewed Casanova, and Casanova got a little too faded, obviously, and he started admitting all the crimes that he was doing in prison. Now, fun fact, he also admitted some of the crimes that he did in his younger years, and a lot of the crimes he admitted to weren't even documented. So, he was admitting to things that realistically no one knew. You're a dummy bitch. So the feds used that interview as an opportunity to investigate him and basically try to condemn him and throw the book at him. DJ Vlad faced tons of backlash, of course from the industry, and he of course received a lot of backlash from fans. So a lot of rappers in the industry that are very partnered and very well respected and connected to Casanova went on massive tirades dragging DJ Vlad and exposing DJ Vlad for being an op. DJ Vlad didn't actually ignore the allegations, but it got so bad to the point where it ruined potential interview opportunities because people were fearful that if they say anything that they've done illegal, that he would have them locked up. Now, DJ Vlad has persistently made it clear that he is not working with the feds at all. Now, all of it is just rumors, speculations, and lies. Well, that next year, 2008, you violate your parole. Yeah. You, uh, they said that you gave a false urine sample. Yeah. Can you talk about that now? Did you actually give them a false urine sample? If that's what they said. Yeah. You know like, I don't want to go in detail okay, fair and enough. start unraveling. Fair enough. Man, you <laughs> already make me nervous. <laughs> People come up here and do your show and go to jail. No, they don't. That's, 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 don't. that's not true. That is not true. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Name, name one person that went to prison because of a Vlad TV. No, I ain't say because. I say after. 
Well, I mean, listen, if you leave here and you go rob a bank, then you will go to prison after a Vlad TV interview, but it has nothing to do with the Vlad TV interview. Right? No. Your interviews force people to say stuff that opens up investigations on. No. And to be honest with you, I kind of see where he's coming from. I feel as though that if these thugs and criminals and bums and drug dealers and scammers and frauds are bold enough to get on a platform and admit all the horrible things that they've done, then they should be willing to deal with the hurricane that comes with it. No one forced you to put a gun to your head to admit to all the shit that you've done. Why the fuck would you open your mouth? Matter of fact, why are you doing interviews? And forgive me, well, don't forgive me, I'm not the biggest fan of Casanova because let's not forget, a couple years ago, he was accused of physically assaulting a woman in a New York City diner after she allegedly annoyed him. Who believes even celebrities should be brought to justice. A bloody assault. Who just grabbed me? Inside a 14th Street diner. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I eat food in three days. Naya Rucker has stitches in her face, a broken jaw, and her tooth was knocked loose. It's, it's more than just the physical pain. Rucker says she was attacked by Brooklyn rapper Casanova and his entourage. Tonight, she's speaking out in this exclusive PIX11 interview. You think just because you're somebody, you can do whatever the hell you want to somebody, and that's not okay. <laughs> It was 4.40 Sunday morning. Naya was at the Good Stuff Diner. She says Casanova was also there with a group of his friends. Rucker tells PIX11, after the waitress brought her food, she wanted to show off her meal on Instagram Live. Then all of a sudden I hear, hey, yo, shorty, take me off your live. So I turn around, I'm like, oh, you're not in my live. You're, you know, you're not even in the frame. According to Rucker, that's when Casanova and his crew attacked. One man put her in a chokehold, dragged her out of the booth, and pulled her across the diner, while Casanova grabbed her arm, her phone, and deleted her Instagram live post. Took my phone, and then after that, choked me to unconsciousness and then dropped me. Rucker is confident the man in the diner was Casanova. He bragged about being a rapper and had on that signature chain. Casanova tweeted a photo of him in New York two hours before the diner beat down. That's what he was wearing when you were at the diner? Mm -hmm. Today, Rucker returned to the 13th police precinct. Detectives are actively working the case. We went to the diner. None of us know anything. Rucker now has a rough and long road to recovery. People think they can get away with stuff because they got a bunch of people with them or they got a bunch of money or they think they somebody. I think I'm somebody too. And this is a great example of when keeping it real goes too wrong. He really had no business going on an interview that's broadcasted on YouTube and social media saying all the things that he's done in his past and talking about it if it wasn't, you know, bought to fruition or, or he was ever charged for it, you know? Even though they technically couldn't use a lot of what he said in the interview against him. Because, again, he admitted to a lot of crazy things that he did in his past. But a lot of it wasn't used as a way to arrest him. A lot of it was used to toss away his credibility. It didn't help DJ Vlad's case. Because if y'all didn't know, DJ Vlad also, for some reason, some way, somehow, got access to court audio when Casanova was in court and the prosecutors were going against him. And the audio basically showed the court saying, we managed to get access to an interview, which basically was DJ Vlad's interview. And basically, it outlined how they used that interview to outline how he's really a horrible person and how it adds up to a lot of the recent stuff that he's done and that he's technically being charged for. Imprisonment. And in, in public interviews describing these prior gunpoint robberies, the defendant has admitted that he oftentimes was the person carrying the gun and threatening innocent store owners, and he wasn't some mere bystander in these incidents. Man, in all honesty, throw the whole bitch away. Why would you sit up here and admit to a lot of the fucked up things you've done in your past, and a lot of it wasn't documented, to an interviewer who has millions of followers? I feel like this generation of horrible criminals have this habit of where they feel the need to broadcast everything. You know, every single month, there's a funny and crazy and horrible story of somebody documenting their crimes for Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat. And then there was that one instance where that dumbass, grown-ass man filmed himself admitting in Miami, Florida, that he drugged a woman with perks, filmed himself on Snapchat bragging about it, and admitted that he was going to have his way with her. 
Now, a good example of people documenting their crimes for the feds to see was that incident in South Florida where that man decided to post himself admitting that he drugged somebody. She's perked out. An 18 year old George Martinez bragging about sleeping with a girl he didn't know on social media. According to his arrest report, he'd given her Percocet. The perk got her knocked out, bro. I already know she can hear everything I say. That girl, just 15 years old, is now fighting for her life. At this point, we, we do not know if she's going to make it or not. Martinez is accused of drugging, raping, and filming her. According to investigators, he showed up to the girl's home in Miramar after seeing a party invite she posted on social media. Brandon Descent says he was there and saw the viral video the next day. That just truly really messed me up. Like, that was like the worst thing to wake up to. According to police, the victim's friend saw the video and went to Martinez's home. The 18 year old then drove the girl with her friends to a hospital over an hour away. Descent says he and his friends got into a fight with Martinez. That too recorded on social media. We met up later, punched him a few times, you know, did what I did, you know, made his face a mess, and then the police came and um, arrested him. Police are now urging parents to have a serious conversation with their kids about drugs and social media. What? Just fucking evil and disgusting and also stupid at the same time. People are just documenting and snitching on themselves. And guess what? The feds can use the little things that they see on the internet and use it against you. Instagram even announced that if they have reasonable cause to turn over evidence to people, like the feds, they will do so if they have reasonable evidence to go through your Instagram message and give it to the feds. Instagram made that very clear that now your Instagram DMs aren't safe anymore. The only platform that realistically hasn't given the feds any access is probably like iMessage or Apple. Apple keeps all their shit on lock, but Instagram, you're not safe on there. TikTok, you're not safe on there. If the feds want to go through your information or go through your DMs and subpoenas to access your information, they could fucking do that shit well in said and that's the first place they check because most people leave a digital footprint on the internet many major headlines reported that dj vlad's interview was a big reason why casanova was condemned but realistically i don't feel bad for casanova but dj vlad did, did go on a massive rant numerous times and any chance he gets to vent about how he's so upset how he looks so bad to the rest of the world when in reality casanova really is the criminal and the bad guy I mean, I, I did an interview with, with Kaz, and we, we've communicated a little bit here here and there. You know, we haven't done any second interviews, but we communicated. I remember, uh, you know, we, last time we talked, it was, like, cool and everything else like that. I, I hope he gets off because it doesn't sound like he's being charged with any actual crimes. It's really more of, like, an affiliation kind of mm -hmm. thing. So hopefully he could just beat it and come home. Like, honestly, I really hope, like, I like Casanova. I really hope he, he comes home and beats this whole thing. Um but to say that I'm the reason why why he's locked up is, is crazy. And it's it, just, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And But that's the thing that pisses me off is that a motherfucker will really retweet some shit like that, quote tweet some shit, say some shit, put that on their story. And then it comes out that it's not true. And they don't feel an ounce of shame right. for having spread some fake news. And even if he did work with the feds, which technically he doesn't, because DJ Vlad made it clear he doesn't, you know, everything is public. You know, at the end of the day, he can't control what people say. People can only say what they want to say. DJ Vlad went out of his way to try to make the rumor go away to the point where he even posted throwback clips anytime someone tried to accuse him of being the feds. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't interview people knowing they're still doing whatever, whatever illegal shit in their present life. Right, right. You know, as I'm talking to them, we don't have those types of relationships. Right. Okay, and, right. and in fact, we, we've even, you know, it, you, you'll see certain interviews where it's like, oh, you have an open case. Let's not talk about it. Next question. Okay, right. You, right. Know, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, when I interviewed the baby, he still had an open case, you know, when he uh, killed that one dude in self-defense at Walmart. So I said, hey, we're just not going to talk about it. Now, I know everyone's going to want me to ask about the Walmart situation, but we actually looked into it. Mm hmm. And we saw that it's still an open case. Right, right, right. So therefore, I'm not going to ask any questions about it whatsoever. Like he basically used the baby's dumb ass. He used the dumb ass as an excuse to bring up that he's for the culture and that he's not going to ask about it. And see, I'm one of the good guys. And I don't trust people like that. I don't trust people who try to make it clear. Like, see, see, I am a good person. So just in case you think I'm not, I am a good person. Like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, he used 
that as an opportunity to shit on the people that call him a complete corporate racist or a culture vulture. Then there was a situation involving Tasha K. I'm not the biggest fan of Tasha K or her antics, but she recently dragged DJ Vlad for working for the feds, according to what he summed it up to. So basically, DJ Vlad did an interview recently expressing how he got Tasha K's video taken down and striked, which is not a good thing if you're a YouTuber to get your content striked, which means if you get three strikes, you're done and your channel will disappear. Court of law, they confirmed that they... She called Cardi B a prostitute, she has STDs, all this type of shit. She kept doing it over and over again until she got sued for $4 million. And it wasn't until she lost the appeal that she said, oh, I'm so sorry, Cardi B. Because she did the same fuck shit with me. She mm. created a whole video, you know, saying, Vlad TV works with the feds, and I know that he gives the content to the feds before it comes out. Because he hates black people or something, something, something. And we, we saw this shit, and it's like, that's not true. We don't, we don't, our content gets publicly released and whoever uses it, uses it. We never worked with the fans or anything else like that. So we hit her. We said, you need to remove this. Oh, can we talk? No, we can't no, talk. Can't My lawyer is CC'd. You got to remove it. Well, we're not going to remove it. Okay. Let's, the lawyers are now already involved. Step two. And then whatever. Later on that day, we removed it. Fuck you. You know, you're just, here you are attacking a woman. You know, blah, blah, blah. I, I hate, I hate when women do. Shout out to all the women out there. Who, who really don't use the attacking a woman when they do fuck shit. Right. Who, you know, I'm attacking a person who's lying about me. I'm attacking a right. thief right. and a liar. A thief and a liar. Right. Tasha K recently caught wind of this and she famously responded to what DJ Vlad had to say. Now that I got this video, don't you ever, you listen to me, white boy. Don't you ever in your life of life ever tell me that I'm lying on you again. Play this footage with these six other coons that is with Matt Hoffa. She created a whole video, you know, saying Vlad TV works with the feds and I know that he gives the content to the feds. Our content gets publicly released and whoever uses it, uses it. We never worked with the feds or anything else like that. So we hit her. We said, you need to remove this. Oh, can we talk? No, we can't no, talk. My can't lawyer talk. is CC'd. You got to remove it. Well, we're not going to remove it. Okay. Let's, the lawyers are now already involved. Step two. And then whatever, later on that day, we removed it, fuck you. You know, you're just, here you are attacking a woman. Give up the footage. Absolutely not. Okay. And I don't, I don't give up anything, like it's publicly released. You hear that black man? You hear that black man? So I didn't know that this interview existed. Even when I spoke about the Justice Department and State Department contacting bloggers asking for footage. Now they can subpoena you if they feel that you have more. But if your interviews have enough in there, yeah, they can subpoena you and ask you for more. And you can say no, like I've done, or you can say yes. Now he's trying to say if we would have wrote that clip some more, he would have said the whole time that he's been doing this, he's only been contacted one time by the feds. But mind you, he was around BMF and them now. Big Meech is in jail right now. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. And don't you ever crack up in your life. Ever call me a liar. He basically bragged about how he got Tasha K's content strike because she made allegations finding out that he allegedly worked with the feds. But I do feel as though that he kind of goes out of his way to like overcompensate to black people. Like I said earlier in this video, he'll do little things such as, well, you know, black is beautiful. You know, all I date is black women or, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, I I'm a guest in hip hop, you know, uh, black people this, you know, there's way more racism than ever, you know, systemic racism, you know, Trump is racist. You know, the typical rhetoric that a lot of liberals will say to try to cater to the black community to show that they down with the swirl. You know, that they're down with the shit, that they with the shit. And then also, I want to really tackle the whole Farrakhan situation. Now, if y'all didn't know, Louis Farrakhan and DJ Vlad have been at odds for many years. Louis Farrakhan has been paying DJ Vlad dust for all eternity. But DJ Vlad, for some reason, anytime he gets the opportunity to talk about Louis Farrakhan, he goes in. And that's fine. You know, he does not like Louis Farrakhan very much because he doesn't agree with his beliefs. Now, for those of y'all who are too young or aren't kept up with American history, Minister Louis Farrakhan is one of the greatest civil rights activists of our time. He's been around since the 60s. He's walked alongside MLK, Malcolm X. 
You know, he's very well acquainted with most of the civil rights activists during the civil rights movement within, you know, the late 50s and the early 60s. Now, as we all know, Louis Farrakhan is Muslim, he's very conservative, and very traditional, and he has had a lot of unpopular opinions for decades about the Jewish community, and people have accused him throughout many decades for being anti-sweet potato pie. On top of that, many people have also said that Louis Farrakhan is a terrible person and that he should be banned from social media. And this has actually happened before. He's been banned from multiple social media platforms for his beliefs. Louis Farrakhan is a GOAT and people need to put some respect on his name. He's nowhere near anti-sweet potato pie or anti-Jew. Because at the end of the day, he's made it very clear that he's only addressing the problematic ones that are responsible for all the racist rhetoric, the racist media, the racist headlines, and the racism that goes on in Hollywood. That's what Louis Farrakhan has preached about. And of course, he has always gone hard about the Jewish community not giving a damn about black people. Not to mention, for decades, the media has been trying to destroy the legacy of Louis Farrakhan by basically trying to portray him as an anti-Semi person who basically spews hateful rhetoric. And of course, that's not a surprise considering most of the major media outlets are owned by the very same community that's trying to paint him in this light. DJ Vlad recently fell out with one of his really good friends, Godfrey. Godfrey is a very popular comedian from the early 2000s and he's still socially relevant on social media and he's known for his viral memes all across TikTok and much more. DJ Vlad tried to press the whole Louis Farrakhan situation and he basically sat up there, DJ Vlad to be exact, misquoted Louis Farrakhan and he basically said that Louis Farrakhan implied that we should be throwing rocks at Jewish people. This kind of whole, I, I personally feel this is coming off the heels of, of Farrakhan's 4th of July speech. Sure. Where he said, uh, those of you that say you're Jews, I will not give you the honor of calling you a Jew. You're not a Jew. You're so-called, you're Satan. And it's my job now to pull the cover off of Satan. And he went on to say like every Muslim, when they see a, a fake Jew, grab a rock. And, and, this is, and this is kind of what I feel is the energy. And a lot of people look up to Farrakhan. Green black. You're a Satan. Those of you that say that you are Jews, I will not even give you the honor of calling you a Jew. You're not a Jew. You're so called. You're Satan. And it's my job now to pull the cover off of Satan so that every Muslim, yes, when he sees Satan, yes, pick up a stone, yes, sir. as we do in Mecca. Yeah. Did you hear me, Brother Abdul Malik? When you know who Satan is, yes, sir. you don't have to kill him, no. The stone of truth. Yeah. See, that's what you throw. So DJ Vlad being the idiot bitch that he is took what Louis Farrakhan said and he completely misquoted it which is really disappointing considering DJ Vlad is a journalist. You would think he would have at least got that right because that's a heinous accusation. Many people were quick to condemn DJ Vlad because why would he put that out there and spread that false information. Now one of the people that were really fierce about it was one of his friends godfrey and godfrey famously addressed why he and dj vlad stopped being friends because dj vlad refused to take acknowledgement and apologize for spreading that fake news and we throw it at satan we throw it at falsehood yeah he said we don't throw to harm anybody he was a metaphor so so um vlad interpreted it as oh just throw rocks at jews which wasn't the truth he lied you know, and I looked and I said, Vlad, and me and Lord Jamar literally talked to him and said, man, you, he didn't say that, dude. And you just misquoted him. He, the Jewish community already doesn't like Farrakhan. So you adding to the fire like that, that's not cool, bro. That's not cool. And you are atheist. He's an atheist. And of course, when people were quit to unsubscribe and check DJ Vlad, even other entertainers like Godfrey and other people who called him personally, DJ Vlad completely deflected and he put up a post on Twitter addressing the situation stating the following. He basically said, on Friday, Vlad TV posted an interview with D.L. Hewley where I referenced part of Farrakhan's speech about Jews. 
After our interview was released, I was made aware that there was a later part in Farrakhan's speech where he clarified those points. Based on that new info, we removed that part of our interview, changed the title, and removed the social media post. Although I don't agree with some of the Farrakhan statements, Vlad TV has always reported on people's accurately and will continue to do so. Shut up! It's just little shit like this that really annoys me because he could have used it as an opportunity to say, I apologize, that was wrong, or I spread fake news and I'm going to rectify it. But instead, he deflected by saying, I don't agree with Farrakhan a lot of the times and we made a mistake because he further clarified in the video. Like, what? So he, so me and Lord Jamar, we, we called him and said, we're not going to talk about you behind your back. We're not going to go on platforms talking shit. We're going to approach you because we think you, you're our friend, but Lord Jamar knows him longer than me. And I said, and, I, and we've kicked it and stuff. And we've actually protected you from shit like here and there. And he goes, well, I'm not going to get bullied into apologizing. And I sent out a statement. I said, I read your statement. It was like a technical difficulty statement, dog. Hmm. You were supposed to say, sorry, what's wrong with that? Even, even corporate companies, White ass corporate companies, when they fuck up, they go, We are sorry, da da da, because they're all about their business and preserving that. And of course, Godfrey went on multiple press runs dragging DJ Vlad, saying that DJ Vlad is a culture vulture. But I find that kind of interesting how you went on his platforms for literally six to seven years straight, getting all types of viral clips and viral interviews and viral moments, and now you choose to call him a culture vulture sucking off a of black black culture you taking all you know you're making money off black culture mm -hmm. you you fuck with black girls shame on them mm -hmm. you know what i mean oh, shit. and now you know because they giving you that confidence to talk crazy to us mm. that's what's happening mm. they giving you confidence these black women give you confidence to disrespect brothers like us so i'm like this listen so in general that's why a lot of people aren't fucking with dj vlad and that's realistically where the hate train comes from so I really hope everybody was able to see where I was coming from with this shit. I hope y'all can leave your thoughts and comments down below. I hope I wasn't too much rambling. But I just want to know what y'all think. Because to be honest with you, after honestly analyzing DJ Vlad and watching his content for many years, I see why a lot of people don't fuck with him. So yeah, that's that for this video. Please just like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts and comments down, down below. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. Mmm. I didn't boil. I forgot I didn't boil these shits. I can lose when I'm with you. How can I snooze and miss the moment? You just to a point. Nobody, nobody, I can lose when I'm with you. I can just snooze and miss the moment. You just in my body. Nobody, nobody like you. I can lose when I'm with you. I can lose. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Okay, that's all you get for free. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram.